Did you know that this song, Good Shepherd, that's arranged here by Sandman and Lori, was originally recorded by Jefferson Airplane in 1969? Actually, the song has a very long history. It goes back to a 19th century hymn called Let Thy Kingdom Blessed Savior. And then it appeared in an 1817 hymnal as Come, Good Shepherd, Feed My Sheep. Then it found its way into a collection of Negro spirituals and was recorded in 1936 by a blind blues player called Jimmy Struthers. And then it was transcribed by Ruth Crawford Seeger and was released by the Library of Congress in 1942 as a collection of spiritual and folk music. And then it was recorded by the Folksmiths in 1958. Pete Seeger published a political version of the song in 1963 called If You Want to Go to Freedom. And then in the 60s, it was taught to Yorma Kalkinen, who was originally a blues musician, later joined Jefferson Airplane, and it had become part of his set list. And he recorded it during a 1968 jam session in San Francisco with Jerry Garcia. Kalkinen, then part of Jefferson Airplane, retitled the song to Good Shepherd and the song appeared on their Volunteers album in 1969. What I like about this is like a lot of the hymns that we have in our hymnal, they have a long history of praising our Lord and listening to it now. It's a good way to remember what Jesus taught us in today's gospel is to feed our sheep. If you're willing, wherever you are, bow your head for a brief prayer. Precious Lord, Thank you for bringing this message to us down through the ages as our current world revolves around us with uncertainty and confusion. Help us to remember to feed your sheep by reaching out to those with less, those who are afraid, those who are alone. Just as a shepherd calms and protects his sheep, let us be reassuring voices of your love to others. With thankful hearts we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us 
and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God's grace and peace and love are yours in Jesus the Christ. Here we are again on another Good Shepherd Sunday. So I want to start by asking you a question. Do you like this annual celebration? Do you like the image of the Good Shepherd leading you beside still waters and restoring your soul? Does that image still speak to you as a Christian today? What is it about that image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd that you like? As you think about your own personal answers, I want you to hold on to those thoughts as I share with you how it feels to be a preacher on this Sunday. Do I like preaching on Good Shepherd Sunday? Not so much at all. <laughs> the image of Jesus as our shepherd has been overused, in my opinion, oversimplified, if you will, till it no longer means very much of anything to a modern Christian. After all, how many of you have really ever seen a shepherd at work with their sheep? I've asked this question at work before, and there's only a few that can raise their hands. So now put your answers on how much you like this image alongside what I've shared with you. My hunch is that we're at opposite ends of the likability spectrum on this image of Jesus as our good shepherd. It's a hunch because you're there and I'm here and I can't ask you and how I wish for those days when I could ask and get answers directly. But be that as it may, it's my job as preacher today to discuss this image of the Good Shepherd and its meaning for all of us in our faith. So first of all, let me tell you what this image is not saying. I encourage you at some point today to go through a search engine like Google and Google Jesus as a Good Shepherd. What you'll come up with are a whole bunch of very placid country scenes, very calm, sunny skies with Jesus standing amongst a lot of sheep or just carrying one on his shoulder. All of the images of peace and serenity that you can muster. And from those kinds of images, we as believers imagine a savior whose sole job it is to keep us safe, to protect us from all harm, and to fill our lives with all kinds of good stuff. I bet this is what you like about the image of the Good Shepherd. Unfortunately, this love them and make everything simple and safe for them idea or image of what a shepherd does has likely never been the norm for what a good shepherd would do. One person I heard of actually traveled over to Palestine to watch what a shepherd in that country would do with their sheep. And what he noticed most was that big, long shepherd's crook, you know, with the bend at the top, that rod that they carry. The shepherd uses it to beat the sheep from behind. He used another word, but I'm going to use the politically correct one. <laughs> he hit the sheep in the behind to make them move and to go on to better pastures. 
In short, the good shepherd keeps the sheep moving out. And actually, it's that idea which is what the good shepherd does do in our text today. If you look specifically at verses 3 and 4. The gatekeeper, also known as Jesus, the good shepherd, calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Jesus, as the good shepherd or the gatekeeper here today, does not just promise to let us in and keep us safe. Instead, he promises he'll lead us out by his voice. Therefore, Jesus, as the good shepherd today, might better be envisioned as that Palestinian shepherd hitting the sheep on the behind to keep them moving out. So there you have it. Jesus wants us to follow him out into the mission that we share, sharing God's love with the world. But Jesus also says in verse 10 today, the last line of our gospel, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Well, there it is, Pastor. You're saying that's where Jesus is promising he'll take care of us. Well, and there you're right, but not in the way most Americans would define it. You see, again, the promise of abundant life has been skewed and misunderstood as the good life we talk about here in American culture. That life where you have an abundance of stuff. Turn on almost any TV preacher this weekend, and it's likely this prosperity gospel that you will hear. Believe, and then good things, or more stuff, they're all on your way. Unfortunately, as Jesus says in the entirety of Scripture, and particularly in the parable of the rich fool in Luke chapter 12, more stuff does not lead to a better life. Amen. The abundant life comes from being rich toward God. That's the point of that parable of the rich fool. And the abundant life comes from following Jesus out into ministry in his name. Well. That comes from today's gospel. Jesus came that we might continue to have life and might continue to have it in abundance. In a literal translation. But if that abundance that Jesus spoke of is not more stuff, what makes up this abundant life? It's following Jesus out into the world and in service to others that is the beginning of the abundant life. Mm -hmm. One day a man stopped in a convenience store to get a newspaper. And he noticed the owner of the store had tears in his eyes as he kept looking out the window. So that man, he asked the owner what was going on. The owner said, do you see that park bench over there by the bus stop? There's a woman who comes here each and every day about this same time. She sits there for about an hour on that bench, knitting and waiting. But buses come and go and she never gets on. And no one ever gets off. To greet her. The other day I carried out a cup of coffee to her and sat with her for just a while. Her only son lives far away and she last saw him two years ago when he boarded one of those same buses. He's married now and they have a new little baby that she's never met. She told me that it helps her to come and to sit here and to wait. She prays for them and she lifts little things for the baby. And she imagines them in their small, tiny apartment, saving money so they can come back here, come back home. I can't wait to see them, she said. The reason the owner was looking out at this particular moment, though, was the three of them, the son, his wife, and that new baby, were just now getting off the bus. And the look on the woman's face as the three fell into her arms was pure joy. And then as she took that tiny grandbaby in her arms and looked down, her face was covered with even 
more joy. The store owner commented, I'll never forget that book as long as I live. The next day, that man came back to that convenience store, and before the owner could get a word in behind the counter, he said to the owner, you sent the bus fare for that family, didn't you? The store owner, with joy and love still filling his eyes, looked back at the man and said, yes, I sent the money. And I'll never forget the look on her face as long as I live. This shop owner had discovered a measure of the abundant life. Maybe preaching on the image of the Good Shepherd isn't quite as bad as I thought. He calls us to follow him in service to others and tells us that there we will find a measure of the abundant life he came to bring us. And it will bring us joy. So I hope looking at Jesus' true call for us to follow has enriched your understanding of the Good Shepherd here today. Amen. Amen.
your hearts and help hopefully inspire you for another week of love and service. I know it's hard to do it when you're stuck at home, but it can still be done in so many ways. A gentle phone call to a friend to literally just looking out into the world and giving somebody a smile. Well, if you've enjoyed your time with us this morning, we've still got a little bit to go, but if you've enjoyed your time, we do ask you to please fill up our, our communion plates to make sure that we can continue. Sorry, I'm breaking the communion plate. The offering plate. Yep, the offering plate. To make sure that we can continue our wonderful ministry and service to God, the Good Shepherd. In addition to that, not only are we asking you to help keep our church going financially, we have our food pantry that is absolutely pivotal right now. We have in the east side of the church a big bin that you can put your donations in. Please, please, please help us continue to feed our, our community out here in this time of need. Um, Pastor Christie gave us the time. So that is, oh my gosh, 7 a.m. to 3.30. So you have all that time. In addition to that, if you like this uh, wonderful worship service, please subscribe. All you got to do is push that like button, then you will be with us every single, every single weekend. It's an absolute blessing. So I hope that you are able to be a part of our world. And with that, I invite Thankful Heart to lead us into that beautiful anthem.
brothers and sisters, will you please pray with me as we lift up what's in our heart to our Lord. <clears throat> Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all places and in all times in praying for the church, the world, and all in need. Heavenly Father, you truly are the good shepherd. But it's so much more than simply getting something from you. It is truly allowing our lives to reflect you in all that we do. Please help us to understand that when we come to church, it is a great, great gift where you fill us up and allow us to carry a light so bright that it shines best when it's allowed to be seen by others. In that, Lord, you truly are our good shepherd. When we not only understand the blessings of being your children, but we are willing to allow that to be the best part of us that is seen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, I give you thanks for all who do all the tasks that need to be done. And I thank you for all the people who are constantly, selflessly putting their own hearts and their own safety on the line. Lord, I also know that there are many people behind the lines that give everything they can to make sure that we have what we need. And so, Lord, I ask right now that you reach out and touch the hearts of all the farmers and all the work that they're doing to try to keep food on our plates. The trouble and challenges that must come in this time must be overwhelming. And yet, Lord, with you at the foundation in which they can stand, not only will they be able to continue to do the great job that they're doing, but hopefully see the blessings that come with it. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, it's an understatement to say right now, we are a divided nation in what needs to be done. I'm not going to go one way or the other, Lord, because you are my way. But I do ask you, Lord, to guide all of our leaders to help them to find the right path, to allow them to see the true and best way in which our whole country may be blessed, our whole world may be blessed. Because you have never failed us. You have never sold us short. You've always, always watched over us, just like any good shepherd. May your teachings and blessings be the ways in which decisions touch the hearts of our people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm going to call out names right now, but as I do it, I ask that the people who are watching us also lift up in their hearts the people that they love so that they may lead them to you. I ask, Lord, to watch over Kathleen and Brian, Taylor and Rachel, Maggie and Wally, Earl, Johanna, Donna and Christina, Ida and Steve, Jan and Diane, Marge, Chris, Gloria, Stephen, Karen, Audrey, Janet, Robert, Veronica, Kathy, Pam, Brenda, and every single heart that you hear out there. They are your children. Love them and help them make it another day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, this is the challenge. But we've stepped up, and we've not faltered. I simply ask that you continue to put a smile on our face and help us to see the glory of you in every day. Because this challenge, this virus will pass, and the best of who we are will continue to live. If the world sees that, Lord, then we are truly blessed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please receive the benediction. 
May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. An almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.